Hi, I'm Brian White, filling in for Buck Lavasser. Small game season has begun. To me, that means it's officially fall. The leaves are changing and the smell of hunting is in the air. To most of us, that means rough grouse hunting. And a great way to experience that is with a bird dog. Hunt them up. Yep. I traveled up. to Gwyn where my son Jason and I spent the day hunting grouse with Dennis Stakowitz, owner of Aspen Thicket Grouse Dogs. I'm telling you, we're having an outstanding day. I'm really excited about this. We'll also get the DNR's outlook on the 2012 rough grouse season. We did hear a lot of drumming. It was very favorable dry weather for um, the hatching season. Then it's off to Dickinson County where we'll talk with a couple of members of UP Whitetails of Dickinson County about hunter walking trails. We encourage the public to come out and use these trails winter time, summer time, fall, spring. September 15th marked the opening of small game season here in the UP but it was also a day for fishing. I stopped in to check out the South Shore Fishing Association's annual fall classic fishing tournament in Marquette. Sit back, put your feet up. It's Monday night and time for Upper Michigan's very own Discovering. The secret streams that flow beneath the cliffs of colored stone. Forest thick and healthy with birch and pine and oak. Surrounded by the greatest lakes this world has ever known. The black bear's awesome presence as he roams the hills and fields Call of the timber wolf The loon's lonesome trill The eagle soaring high above The trout lies deep and still These are what I treasure The only way I measure Feelings that I have for this fine land There is so much to discover when you're a long-time lover of northern Michigan. Today's show is brought to you by Hiawatha Log Homes, building dreams one home at a time, and Wendrick's Trust, keeping the UP covered since 1975. The last of the hot days of summer are gradually slipping away and a new fall is taking over. It's time to fire up the wood stove and dig out the car hearts. The woods is still mostly green, but evidence of the upcoming season shows up more and more each day. The air is sweet with the unmistakable smell of popple and maple. It brings back countless memories of many a great day in the woods. There's nothing quite like the fall of the year. To many of us, the Upper Peninsula is about the outdoors. And the outdoors doesn't get much better than it is in September, October, and November. My son Jason and I had the opportunity to spend a day hunting grouse with Dennis Stakowitz of Aspen Thicket Grouse Dogs in Gwyn. So some of the equipment that I use for hunting, and this is, you know, in particular we use pointing dogs, and they tend to run a little bit bigger. And by run big, I mean you could have a dog that could be 80 to 100 yards out in the grouse woods, and when they're out that far, um, you want to be able to keep track of them. So I like to put a put a bell on the dogs, a big bell that you can hear. Um, and then when the dog stops and goes on point, of course, the bell stops. And then I have a, a beeper. And basically when the dog stops, then this thing starts beeping. It helps you find the dog. And then back to this GPS collar, I run a GPS collar on them because there are times when a big running dog can get out there, you know, with the woods up here, with wolves and everything else we have now, you want to do the best you can to, you know, respect your dogs and, and make it a safe hunt for everyone involved. I think, to be honest with you, that dog was pointing that bird at least 30 yards. Incredible. Dog's just got a great nose. Good boy. Atta boy. Good job, buddy. Actually, this could be a female, because if you see the broken band on the bird in the center, that generally indicates a female. There's also other ways to check for that, but this is a young of the year bird. He did a, a heck of a job 
He didn't even rip it up too bad when he brought it in. The dog retrieved a hand very nicely, got got the bird, and he brought it, you know, just like a dog should. He, and I've never had to train this dog to retrieve. That's all natural in him too. And yeah, that's good stuff. This is, I was having a really, really great day and this is just icing on the cake. This is really nice. I love these birds. They're beautiful. Every one of them, every one of them, I, you know, prayer thanks to God for this, man. This is, provides for the family and it's just a great, great clean experience and these birds are just awesome. Good job, bud. Have you been dreaming of owning a log home, cottage, or camp? We are Hiawatha Log Homes, proudly serving the UP and satisfied customers since 1983. Our in-house staff of professionals are ready to help you create the perfect log home plan. Visit our website or stop by our model home and meet our staff. From cottages to castles, we can custom design to your specific needs. Hiawatha Log Homes, building dreams one home at a time. You know, we're hunting in probably a five to ten year old cut you know these are these small aspen and it's very important for cover for the birds it's not only a food source but it's a cover and although it looks a little open in here the stem density and the thickness and a lot of these blowdowns all of that stuff makes cover for the birds because they have more predators than just you know your coyotes and pine martens and stuff like that they've got hawks and whatever it may be from above those predatory birds so they like this thick cover she's looking for it I'm telling you, it's gonna come out the end of this cover. Tail's going nuts. <laughs> On opening weekend, what happens is a lot of guys hit the woods and they generally don't get too far off the roads, push the birds back. If you're willing to put a little shoe leather into it and get a good half mile or so more off of those roads and two tracks, and you're, you're gonna get into a lot of birds. <laughs> Dead bird, in here, in here. Catch it up, she's got it. Here. Here, girl. Good dog. That's an older bird. A, probably a... I think it's a bird from this year, to be honest with you, but I think it's older than the, than the one that we got earlier today. And this is a, almost a cinnamon phase. It's got a nice russet red color on it, but it's got a gray tail. And sometimes those ones with a gray tail, they get like what they call a cinnamon phase. Yeah, every one of these is a treasure. I'm telling you, we're having an outstanding day. I'm really excited about this. Even with these dogs and all the training that goes into it, this is a hard sport. And I'm telling you, it's a pretty rare day where we get come home with two birds. Credit to the dog. It's another one we probably wouldn't have found without the dog. And she pointed it. You did good, mama. You did very good, huh? Who's daddy's girl? Yeah, you are, huh? daddy's girl you know a pointing dog they really depend on the wind and using their nose to point body scent of a bird and then they they you know they stop on point when they know where that magical line is and they they freeze from that smell a well-bred pointing dog should run through the woods his head should be level or should be just up a little bit so they catch that body scent a dog that spends his time with his nose on the ground too much during part of the initial search is not going to make a good grouse dog because he's going to bump a lot of birds he's going to run right into them the next dog I'm getting out is just a six month old puppy and hopefully what we're going to see from her and what I've seen so far is a lot of natural ability. Typically when they're this young they they operate you know basic on their genetics without any bad habits developed. You know we're going to see a dog that's going to be really fired up running around. Probably point some birds only hold them for a couple seconds. Hopefully if we can get up to her we can shoot some. point kill bird how awesome is that what a girl what a good girl come here come here oh good dog good doggy and a pup we don't have a tail fan left because she got it but that's your bird girl your first grouse her first grouse yeah good job puppy that's a young bird, young of the year bird. Puppy's first point, that is so awesome. 
she pointing another one? Get it? Yep. She pointed right at it. Oh, she pointed it? Pointed at it just like the other dogs were. Awesome. Good job, Georgia. Good job, puppy. Good job. Good girl. Congrats. Be sure to tune in next week when we'll spend more time with Dennis and find out how you can train your own dog to hunt birds. Now a word about this year's grouse forecast from wildlife biologist Monica Joseph. We expect grouse numbers to be somewhat like last year. Typically in this year of a decade we're seeing a decline in grouse numbers um, and we fully expected to see that. However, this spring, um, just prior to our uh, grouse survey drumming counts, um, we had uh, quite a few grouse drumming, more than we expected. That uh, didn't prove itself out in the survey. Uh, numbers had dropped a bit by then, but we did hear a lot of drumming. It was very favorable dry weather for um, the hatching season. And so we did bring off some pretty good sized broods. And uh, typically in a down year, the brood sites aren't as big, aren't as big. But what we witnessed this summer <clears throat> during our field work was that brood sizes were, were um, you know, end to t eight to ten birds uh, per per clutch. So um, we expect the season to be more favorable than we initially thought it would be. But usually in these years when we're um, declining in the cycle we see things get kind of spotty. So there's going to be good areas, there's going to be bad areas. So you might go to your normal hunting stand and, and not find many birds, but in other areas they're still going to be uh, pretty promising for, for this time in the decade. Grouse are on a 10-year cycle, and that's not exactly 10 years, but uh, can change over maybe a three-year period, the peak. Um, and typically at the end of a decade we see the peak and at the mid-decade, say 2015, we expect to be at the low end in the years on either side to be either climbing or decreasing. So that's what we're expecting. It does look a bit more promising than we thought it would be at, um, at the outset just because of where we sit in the cycle. <laughs> The art of taxidermy is the passion of North Country legends. Borrowing on decades of experience from some of the most accomplished wildlife artists in the country, each mount delivers award-winning quality and lifelike realism. Throughout the process, your trophy will receive meticulous care to ensure that you receive a finished piece that you can be proud of. Design assistance is available to help you select the perfect pose to showcase your trophy as well as custom pieces for the most discriminating customers. To find out more, visit North Country Legends at northcountrylegends.com. If you got your bear or were a successful hunter in this past weekend's youth hunt, or maybe had some luck with grouse or fishing, let us know by posting it on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash realoutdoorstv. The UP is home to a wide variety of organizations, from local sportsmen's clubs to larger UP-wide groups dedicated to preserving and improving the quality of hunting and fishing for all to enjoy. Much of this has been accomplished through projects ranging from improving wildlife habitat to preserving our lakes and streams. One such project, a joint venture between the Michigan DNR and UP Whitetails, is Dickinson County's Hunter Walking Trails. I spoke with a couple members from the UP Whitetails Association of Dickinson County, as well as a representative from the DNR to find out more. We were looking for projects. At one time we did a lot of uh, reforestation, and that kind of went on the wayside, and we decided to uh, look for something to do and to come up with these walking trails. What is really good about them that I think is that if you have a youngster that you want to introduce to hunting, they can walk these trails without fear of seeing a car or a vehicle on a, on a logging road someplace. They're easy to walk. We just like to have, get these kids out where they can see game. If they don't see any game, they're going to lose interest fast. Uh, we put them in conjunction with the DNR. Um, they contracted out to have a contractor come in and cut them, bulldoze them, level them, and then we come in as whitetails. We seed them, cut them once a year. We have quite a bit of clover in here, so they try and improve the wildlife habitat for the deer, the rabbits, the snowshoe hares, the turkeys, the partridge. 
rough grouse habitat has been real good so far. The couple walks we've taken the last two to three weeks on these trails, I've kicked up quite a few coveys of grouse. These trails attract a lot of wildlife um, for recreational users. So you might be grouse hunting, but there's everything on these trails. There's um, certainly bears like to eat clover, deer like to eat clover, grouse eat it, woodcock use it, turkeys use them, and then all of the other critters that are out there love to run roads and chase around the things that are eating the clover. So we have uh, any number of wild animals that you can see while you're work walking on those trails. So it's good for even bird watchers and hikers. So. We encourage the public to come out and use these trails. Winter time, summer time, fall, spring. Snowshoeing is great on these trails. We see a lot of rabbits and stuff in the wintertime when we snowshoe these. Typical trail is one and a half to two miles. Now we have four trails that we built in Dickinson County. We have this one here in the Kearney Lake, Rock Lake area. We have one over on the Browns Lake Road and one on the Norway Truck Trail. These trails are being maintained by UP Whitetails and the important part here is we, we at one time had a large program in which we did a number of hunter walking trails and since that time our, our personnel and our um, our funding has declined significantly, so a big part of this is not only making the trail, but making sure that we maintain it. So when UP Whitetails came in and took over the responsibility of maintenance, it was fantastic because they stay in, a, in good condition. And not only UP Whitetails, but many other sportsmen's groups have similar um, programs on hunter walking trails involved. The ones that do jump in and help with the habitat, that's, that's key and they do work together on some of these systems and, and plan on doing so in the future. Some of the groups that haven't quite um, uh, got started up on it yet plan on working together with some other groups to um, work on habitat projects like, like the hunter walking trails. So, so any number of groups and certainly the groups that are interested in participating can work through their uh, sportsmen's coalitions through the Department of Natural Resource these meetings and maybe get up and running and either how to run their own or to be uh, cooperators with other sportsmen's groups on, on some of these systems. Don't miss the Wood Tick Music Festival in Hermansville, Michigan. Four days of great bluegrass, country, folk, blues, and rock and roll. Over 25 bands, fun for the entire family. Carry-ins welcome, kids 12 and under free. Buy your tickets and campsites and find out everything you need to know online at woodtickfestival.com. That's woodtickfestival.com. The Wood Tick Music Festival in Hermansville, Michigan. This portion of today's show brought to you by... Superior Welding and Manufacturing, a proud supporter of the outdoors. September 15th marked the opening of small game season here in the UP, but it was also a day for fishing. I stopped in to check out the South Shore Fishing Association's annual Fall Classic Fishing Tournament in Marquette. The South Shore Fishing Association is uh, comprised of uh, local anglers that are interested in promoting sport fishing. Um, we've been in existence for about 10 years and uh, we hold two tournaments per year. Uh, we have a spring shootout and this is the Fall Classic that you're at today. The Fall Classic tournament usually takes place about the second, uh, second week of September. The, um, the spring shootout takes place in May. The Fall Classic Tournament has uh, been held for the, the 10 years of the association's existence. And uh, this year we had uh, 41 boats enter. And uh, that's a little bit less than normal, but uh, we had a postponement from uh, the weather delay last weekend. But, uh, we still had a real good turnout today. The Fall Classic uh, basically has uh, four categories. We have uh, catch and keep trout, catch and keep salmon, as well as live release trout and live release salmon and we like to promote the, the live release. And so uh, we, we have a, a fish tank set up where we bring the fish inshore and uh, put them in the, in the aerated uh, tank. 3.94! And uh, to try and make sure that they can be returned back to the water. 6.69! 3.42! Most of the teams in the fall tournament uh, end up fishing uh, pretty close to shore. Uh, they're kind of interested in the salmon and uh, throughout the day I think they 
kind of disperse and uh, start going out looking for lake trout. Most of the teams are from uh, the Marquette area, but we certainly welcome all teams from, uh, from anywhere to, to join us. And we, we do have a few teams that come from out of town. 7.53. Um, Crystal Falls area, Munising. Uh, the Fall Classic Tournament, we basically pay out a first, second, and third place in each of the four categories. And we also have a wild card prize, which is the combination of your two biggest fish from any two species. The boats are going to come in uh, single file, and each one will uh, have to come up to shore. And uh, one person from each boat will come ashore with, with a, their cooler of fish. Uh, boats who have uh, live fish to release will take precedent over boats that are bringing in uh, catch and keep trout and salmon. One of the other things that South Shore prides itself in is um, we participate in a net penning project of king salmon uh, each spring with the uh, DNR and uh, a few organizations um, actually net pen fish but we've, we've really tried to work with the DNR to um, develop net penning of, of king salmon to promote um, the king salmon fishery in Lake Superior. Uh, we're also uh, looking for ways to bring youth in keep youth interested in sport fishing and we uh, take part in a Big Brothers Big Sisters fishing tournament which we just held uh, within the last month and we took uh, about a half a dozen kids out on the big lake to um, fish on the big lake and we also had a trout pond on shore for the kids that uh, couldn't go out and uh, it was a real successful event. 4.53, real screamers. Net penning's a big one, the Big Brothers Big Sisters, the Stream Cleanup Project, those are the sort of the things we've been hanging our hat on this year as ways of doing more as an organization for the community and what are we doing besides putting on tournaments. And so we've really been trying to look for new ways to give back to the community. Relentless. $500. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Monday night right here on Upper Michigan's very own Discovering. <laughs>